this is the third lecture in our look at the digestive system. Um, we've talked so far about the mouth and esophagus and the stomach, and now we are moving on to some of the accessory organs of digestion as well as um, starting to talk about the small intestine. So um, when we talked in the last lecture, we were at the point where all of the food had been kind of mixed up with digestive juices in the stomach and it was leaving the stomach through the pyloric sphincter in um, kind of a thick liquid called chyme. So at about the time that the stomach is processing all of that food and digesting it down, um, there is also some accessory digestion happening or beginning to happen in the pancreas, which is an organ that lies right alongside the stomach, kind of um, behind it on the spine side of the stomach. And the pancreas is involved in both endocrine processes, and endocrine um, means that it is um, producing hormones, and we're not really gonna talk so much about that, but the pancreas is also involved in secretion processes. So that means that it makes and then releases certain um, substances and enzymes that help with digestion. <clears throat> Excuse me. So there is a small little structure called a duct that secretes um, the materials made by the pancreas. So kind of in a general sense, we call this material pancreatic juice. And that juice includes enzymes, it includes um, some other kind of uh, watery substances, some buffers and things like that. Um, some of the enzymes that are secreted by the pancreas um, are very specific to different kinds of food that you might eat. So um, the pancreas secretes amylase, which you've heard before. We talked about amylase um, when we talked about the mouth, and its job is to break down carbohydrates. So we've got amylase, that's our first one here. Oh, that's not a very good color choice. Let me go with the red, there we go. Um, the second one is lipase, and lip, or lip, L-I-P, refers to fats. So lipase is an enzyme that breaks really big fat molecules down into smaller fatty acids and a simpler fat called glycerol. There's also nucleases, which break down nucleic acids into their simple nucleotides, the A and T and C and G. And then there are proteases, which break down proteins. So hopefully what you're seeing here is there's kind of a pattern in most cases where the ACE tells you that it's an enzyme, and the first part of the word tells you what that enzyme digests. Um, so proteases digest protein, and because there are so many different kinds of protein, um, proteins from different kinds of animals, proteins from um, different kinds of plants, there are a lot of different proteases that digest specific kinds of proteins. So some of the names you'll hear um, of proteases include trypsin, chymotrypsin, and then this is a fun one, carboxypeptidase. Um, I'm not too worried about you knowing those terms. I just want you to be able to um, recognize that they are enzymes that digest proteins. This is stimulated to start producing these enzymes when the body um, takes in food. The action of the pancreas is controlled by the nervous system, just like pretty much everything else in the body, and it's also controlled by the endocrine system. So different hormones in the body help to regulate your digestive process. They help to tell you when you're hungry and help to tell you when you're full and help to um, tell the different organs when to produce the substances that help with digestion. So when food hits the stomach, you'll remember from the last lecture, that stimulates the stomach to release gastric juice. It also stimulates the pancreas to begin making and releasing pancreatic juice because we know that food doesn't stay in the stomach for very long. It's only there for a couple of hours, and then it moves on to the small intestine. And so when it gets to the small intestine, the pancreas releases a bunch more digestive enzymes to help continue breaking down that food. So as the chyme enters the small intestine, the walls of the small intestine secrete a um, protein called secretin. 
this protein doesn't go into the intestinal, it doesn't go into where the food is, it goes the opposite way. It goes into the bloodstream around the digestive system, and that tells the pancreas that it's time to release um, its juices and its enzymes and its things. So the pancreas at that point releases a bunch of buffers. Buffers help to neutralize or balance out the chyme. Remember that the chyme has a whole bunch of, of um, acid from the stomach, which is really damaging to the body. And so the pancreas releases buffers to help balance out that acid and to help bring it to a more neutral state. Um, <clears throat> if the chyme or the food that you've eaten has a lot of protein and fat in it, then a second protein is released. I'm just going to call it CCK because it's easier. The full word is cholecystokinin, but again, CCK is easier. So the protein and the fat in the chyme tell the body that we need CCK, and then the CCK stimulates the pancreas to release protein enzymes and fat enzymes. If you haven't eaten any protein or fat, you've just eaten, say, um, I don't know, an apple that is mostly carbohydrates and water and very little of anything else, then there's no need for CCK. And so it would not be released. The body is really well designed at identifying the type of food that you've eaten and then releasing the appropriate enzymes and chemicals. So another accessory structure that is in that same general area of the stomach and the pancreas is the liver. The liver, so the pancreas is on the left side of the body, um, right behind the stomach. The liver is on the right side of the body and it takes up a bunch of space. It's a really large organ and it's one of the heaviest, um, I mean, if you don't include the skin, the, it's the heaviest internal organ in the body at about three pounds. It has um, what are called lobes, so kind of different sections. The largest section is the right lobe, and um, the liver is very, very dark red, kind of almost a brownish red, because it has a ton of blood vessels, tons and tons and tons of blood vessels. And those vessels bring food that has just been absorbed by the stomach and the small intestine, and it brings it directly to the liver so that the liver can be involved in metabolism. The liver has a bunch of different jobs that we'll talk about in just a minute. So it's constantly needing food and oxygen to do its jobs. Um, the first of those jobs is... Um, involves a group of cells called the Kupfer cells. Um, these are named for the scientist who first discovered them. And their job is to filter um, harmful things out of the blood. So the liver acts as a huge filtration system. Um, the Kupfer cells specifically remove bacteria and then um, any kinds of like harmful pathogens that might have been brought in through the food, for example. Um, there are also, inside the liver, there are these tiny little canals. Think of them as little pipes or little passageways. Um, they're called canaliculi, which just means tiny canal. And they all drain into a larger canal system. I'll try and make these all kind of drain together. They drain into a big passageway called the common hepatic duct in um, Greek Hepat means liver, so a lot of times you'll hear um, liver-related parts um, referred to in that way, like hepatitis, for example, is a disease of the liver. The liver um, is filtering the blood and taking out harmful bacteria and other things. It is um, moving bile from one place to another, and then there are all of these other jobs. So the liver helps to balance and maintain the sugar that's in your blood. Um, we call that blood glucose levels. It helps to make fat. So when the body eats fat and then it breaks those fats down into tiny little particles, the liver puts those tiny particles together to make things like um, cholesterol, for example, to help kind of protect different organs in the body. It makes all kinds of other fats. Um, the liver breaks up amino acids. So when you eat protein, proteins break down. Remember that from the very beginning of the year, we talk about proteins are made of amino acids. So when you eat large 
um, bodies of protein, say a steak, for example, the digestive system breaks that steak down into smaller amino acids. The liver then takes those smaller amino acids and breaks them up even further into their tinier parts, into just a few simple um, elements and compounds. And then it uses those small parts to make blood proteins, to make um, waste products. So things like urea, um, your urine includes urea, which is a toxic uh, waste product. The liver is also responsible for storing a bunch of things. It stores glycogen, which is a sugar-related hormone. It store or not hormone, pardon me, a sugar-related product. It stores iron, which is another reason why the liver is so dark. Iron has kind of a rusty color. Um, it stores a variety of vitamins, including A, D, and B12. And then um, the liver is it back to kind of the filtering job I told you at the beginning. The liver breaks down things that are old in the body. Um, so blood cells, for example, your blood cells have a lifespan of about four months. As they get old, they start to break apart. And so the liver takes those broken and damaged and old cells and it pulls them apart into parts that can be recycled and parts that are just too old and too um, kind of used up. It breaks down um, any toxins that you might take in, things like alcohol, um, even drugs, like, uh, well, illicit drugs, obviously, but also um, medication drugs have to be digested by the body. And so the liver does that job. Um, any other toxins, like let's say you ate a, an apple that was sprayed with pesticide, your liver would break that down. All of those things are happening in the liver, um, which is why when people get liver disease, that's a really enormous problem for their um, health and survival because your liver does such a variety of jobs and it's really important in keeping you healthy and safe. Um, anything that the liver breaks down into waste becomes a part of bile. And bile is a, um, is a digestive chemical um, and it helps to both um, further digest the food that you eat and it helps to um, transport waste products into um, eventually into the large intestine where it can leave the body um, through the colon and the rectum. Um, some of the parts of bile include um, pigments from old blood cells, um, extra fat as cholesterol, um, electrolytes, things like that. So um, the last accessory organ that we're going to talk about in this lecture is the gallbladder. The gallbladder lies right alongside um, the liver and the small intestine kind of um, up behind the liver. It's a um, little kind of tear-shaped sac that connects both to the liver and um, eventually to the common hepatic duct. Remember, that's the big passageway that carries bile um, into the digestive system. So the gallbladder doesn't make anything, it just stores it. The liver makes bile and then the gallbladder stores that bile. Um, while the bile is stored inside the gallbladder, the gallbladder will um, remove any excess water and reabsorb it so that um, the body's water balance is being maintained. And it just keeps that bile there until it's needed. Bile is really only used when the body has eaten um, a high concentration of fat primarily, although protein can also trigger it. So remember I told you um, when we talked about the pancreas that if you eat something that has a bunch of fats and proteins, that will stimulate CCK to enter the blood and tell the pancreas to release protein enzymes and fat enzymes. It also tells the gallbladder to release bile. So bile, protein enzymes, fat enzymes are all released into the small intestine. That passes the bile, so here we go, bile goes into the small intestine and it basically surrounds any fat that is there in the chyme. 
and it breaks these big fats up into smaller little fat droplets. Fat is really hard for the body to digest because your body is water-based and fat is not water-based. Fat is fat-based. And so think about this, if you dropped a cube of butter in a bucket of water, the butter's just gonna sit there because the two things don't mix well. That's what happens in your body too. So there's these huge globs of fat that the body really can't do anything with. That's where bile comes in. Bile surrounds, so think of bile as being this red liquid. The bile surrounds the fat and it breaks it into these smaller and smaller and smaller droplets. And that makes the droplets um, easier for the body to absorb. So as this big fat glob breaks into smaller ones um, and more and more and more digestive enzymes are added into the mix and more and more water is added in, then it kind of all gets churned up together and it makes it easier for the body to absorb it. Um, the bile also includes a substance called bile salt and the bile salt helps to um, kind of chunk together these little bits of fat with the vitamins that are in the food that you eat. Some vitamins um, are very attracted to fat, and so when the fat gets broken into these smaller parts, it makes it easier for the vitamins to stick to them, and then the vitamins get absorbed into the um, wall of the small intestine along with the fat product and all of that is um, handled by the bile. The bile helps to make that process much more effective. So that's it for the accessory organs of the digestive system. If you would please bring three discussion questions or clarification questions and write a strong summary, I will see you in class. Thank you.